Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Robbie. And that's it tonight. Ross had a prior engagement that came up last minute, which doesn't make sense because it can't be prior and come up last minute. Yeah, it's good. Words are hard. Yeah, it doesn't add up. But yeah, I words Ross, are hard. We miss you. Hope all is well. <laughs> he, he, I know he is disappointed because uh, I have so many things to talk about tonight. <laughs> Uh, some of which are, I know he's going to be getting later. So I'm definitely, we're definitely going to hit those high points. Um, tonight, as always, we're socially distanced. Robbie is up in Wisconsin. I'm down here in Kansas City, even though we were just in person together. Mm-hmm. It was good to see you, buddy. <laughs> it, was, it, it had been a minute. It had definitely been a minute. And you were so incredibly busy that that's why we didn't <laughs> record in person. Because we were roommates and I saw you a total of what, 12 minutes? Oh, it's a little more than that, but yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of running the show this year helped me, uh, or not helped me, but um, required me to be a little bit more on the ground, moving around, driving a golf cart, just putting out fires when they can. But it was, <laughs> it was still fun. I think that's what the third year, third year we've been roommates together, or something like that. Second, second now, now. second time. Yeah, yeah. because I didn't always. remember. I didn't come last spring because I mm-hmm. had to, that content trip, which my background is from that mm-hmm. that content trip with the Adventure Van Company. Um, yeah, so it's only we've only two years now, but I am sad I missed that one in the spring because it was rainy and you guys drove the LX six hundred, which I haven't had a chance yet. On street tires too, that thing was yeah, uh, it it was oof. I don't even want to think about how much uh, damage those like God, I don't know twenty spoke wheels had. I think there were I think there were nineteens or twenties on street tires. It was still pretty good though. I mean that's a that thing is a tank and um. But yeah, thankfully we didn't have any any. I mean, the, I think the, I don't think the weather could have been any better this year at a rally. Um, no, the weather was gorgeous. Yeah, it was incredible. Track driving it, and off roading. You know, even though it wasn't as, uh, you know, precariously muddy as it was in the years past, the fact that it was dry and you could go a little bit quicker, and um, it was it was a great way to just like test the the chops of a bunch of off road vehicles that like a lot of people just haven't driven yet. No, and it, I don't know. Like with the with the demographics of people that we have there, mm-hmm. I don't know that like the mud helps us because um, I think it would terrify a lot of the neophyte isn't the right word, but people who are like driving off the road for the first time. Mm-hmm. Like if we'd have thrown mud at them, they'd have just been like, uh, uh-uh. yeah, off off roading. I think in general at our mama events, and you know, for those who are listening, mama is the Midwest Automotive Media Association uh it's a group of a couple hundred journalists analysts photographers podcasters um and manufacturer reps located across the country primarily in the midwest but across the country as well as into canada too but i feel like the off-road course well even like off-roading even if you're not at the track like out road america i feel like a lot of times people get intimidated by off-roading exactly which is understandable i mean you don't want to you know bash the mirror off a ram power wagon or something like that but um i think that (laughs) the course that we set up is really good in the sense of like if you've never off-roaded before if you've never you've never driven a tire over anything that's like pavement or asphalt like you can do so not only in a safe manner but in a slow and controlled way and then you've got you know we have we have I don't know, six, seven people from Jeep Jamboree out there helping people teach people. Yeah. So it's, it's a really good opportunity for people to like, you know, get a little bit more comfortable off road. And and that was there. There were a number of people who I spoke with ahead of time that I was like, that's all I'm going to do. And they were like, mm-hmm. really? Mm-hmm. We've mm-hmm. never done anything. I was like, just pick one. Just go do it. You're not going to break anything. They're going to yeah. take care of you. Like yeah. it'll be just fine. <laughs> and then I talked to them later and they were like, I'm so glad I did. That was so much fun. It was like, oh, yeah. The I think the mantra I heard someone say is like you can get a similar thrill off roading as you can to the track driving, but at like way lower speeds with like way less risk. Yeah, and I mean they both. I mean as much as I love driving in a hundred plus miles an hour on Road America, like it is an absolute blast. My favorite thing at this event is always the off road course. I just think it's <laughs> so much fun. I think it's really pretty. I think it it's just you know, it requires a lot of concentration. And I mean, not to say that like going around Canada corner at 60 miles an hour does, but you know, when you're off-roading. Hold on, you can go Canada corner at 60? Because that is not how fast I drove. <laughs> <laughs> 60 might be a stretch, but like yeah. 50, 50 or so. But I mean, I think the off-roading course is always such a blast because like you're you're really focused and I feel like you really get to like work on your agility driving some of these vehicles. And um, 
Yeah, I love the off road course. I think if I weren't um if I weren't running the show this year, I probably would have spent ninety percent of my time <laughs> on the off road course. It's because we have like I think sixteen or seventeen vehicles or something like that on the off. I dr- I drove fourteen of them. Wow. Um, I know that for a nice. fact. And I was kicking myself because one of the ones I didn't drive was like the 2024 cross track, like the brand new cross track. Which I was, was like, actually very good. I know. And I just was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Yeah. I'll get to it. Somehow I found my way into Compass Trailhawk, but didn't get into the brand oh, new cross well, track. For a while now. Yeah, yeah I know. No, it's all, I was, it, it's all good. I, um, yeah, I was, I took the cross track. Uh, they had a, I think it was a cross track sport. I think that's what one it was, but um yeah i took that out i only i only off-roaded a couple vehicles but the cross track was pretty capable i mean it doesn't have the same level of prowess as like a cross track wilderness which i'm super excited to get behind the wheel of at some point (laughs) Um, but i mean i'll tell you for for a for a bone stock subaru cross track i mean i don't know hell i had a good time i thought it was really capable it was it didn't struggle at all not even not even one bit I was pulling up the Maroni on it real fast so I could give you the trim level. Mm-hmm. I think it was a sport because it had the yellowish accents on it. I think you're right, but it's, of course, how the Maronis are always listed. Yeah, it says Crosstrek Sport, and it's a slashed RRD. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know, know what the RRD is. The only thing I could think of is if it was a pre-production model. It might have been a pre-production model. I know I don't know what RRD stands for. I've never seen that on a on a Monroney before. Holy. Could have been a, so could I, have been a pre-production. I, I should have got in it because it was the cheapest vehicle out there. Mm-hmm. Cheaper than the Compass Trailhawk. Well, a Compass like, Trail a, a Compass Trailhawk is pretty. I mean, I'm looking at the the numbers. I think. Did you get the price on the Compass Trailhawk? That was probably. I it was. I have it buried in my list of stuff. Um, so the base price of the Compass Trailhawk was thirty five seven forty five, mm-hmm. as tested forty six thousand two hundred and ninety dollars. Wow! The Maroni on that cross track is thirty two thousand dollars. So for yeah. fourteen thousand dollars cheaper, Oof. or the price of a decent used car nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jeep did a. I think Jeep. I mean, they just like I think refreshed the. Uh, compass last year this past year but um i mean they did a really great job on it it looks great the interior is wonderful i mean it's still it's still a, a very very hot seller for jeep you know prince prince builds for them essentially but um wow yeah that's a lot of that's a lot of money and what's funny is i see a lot of compass and cherokee trailhawks uh just bombing around the suburbs you know yeah driven by driven by people that i don't even think they know that they have all-terrain tires on there (laughs) probably probably not yeah they're like this looks capable let's do this yeah like oh there's a bump in the road to go to starbucks okay (laughs) let's let's get a a top triplet no i mean it's not to rag on the compass trailhawk i drove a renegade trailhawk years ago on an off-road course and i was uh genuinely shocked how fun and capable that little boxy (laughs) thing was i was shocked (laughs) the best off-roader is the one you care about the least (laughs) I guess that's a good way to say it. <laughs> I mean, if I had a five hundred dollar Corolla, yeah, I could do a ton of amazing stuff in that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're locking once. Diff- I, guess, I should say I should do a ton of amazing things once. <laughs> yeah, you're, lo- you're locking diff on a on a five hundred dollar Corolla is just you yanking the e brake back and forth a bunch of times. A hundred percent. Momentum <laughs> off roading, like we can have a great time. So. Speaking of momentum off-roading, uh, the first one I want to talk about is the it's the first time I've been in a, the new Tundra was mm-hmm. the TRD Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an image to go with this because it's very orange and very big. Um, yeah, what is that color? Like lava lava burst orange or something? Oh, man. I closed that window. I don't have the Maroni's pulled up anymore. <laughs> but it, I know it's a big deal for them because every one of them is that orange. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. At least all the press ones I've seen are that orange anyway. Mm-hmm. But so positives I came away with, very competent power delivery. It was great on road. It was very smooth. So I think we had uh, Doug DeMuro on. Uh, I, I shouldn't say I think we had. I know we had Doug DeMuro on. And he talked about the new Tundras basically being a lifestyle truck. They don't mm-hmm. quite have the capability that Toyotas mm-hmm. have been known for. But man, do they look like they do. 
<laughs> and I don't think he's wrong with that because like the only other uh, positives I had was a very uh, spacious cabin, very comfortable place to sit. Um, it had a normal gear selector as opposed to something with buttons and moving things that actually yeah. had the old school Toyota one. Um, and that there were LED lights in the bed were all my quick positives. My quick negatives were like, it was wide on the tighter mm -hmm. sections of the trail. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Learning the powertrain, I, I was a little confused on when the hybrid was kicking in and when the uh, turbo activated engine was kicking in. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it only comes with a rear locker. Like, come on, it's the TRD Pro. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nope, only rear locker. Um, and there's no factory winch option. Like, Ford has factory winch options. Ram has factory winch options. Jeep obviously has factory. Like, Toyota doesn't have a factory winch option yet. Yeah, uh, and when they do the the trail, they're doing the trail hunter trim on the new um, Tacoma, um, right? Which I which don't believe has a factory winch. Option. I think it does actually. It does okay. I, I think the trail hunter does. So like, or if we, we got a, we've seen the trail hunter concept for a Tundra. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that as as a package yet for the truck itself. So mm -hmm. potentially that's it. My only other gripe about this thing is the exhaust exit is not tucked up. So mm -hmm. like. Great departure angle is an issue on a full size pickup truck, mm -hmm. and the exhaust is like hanging down below the bumper. Like, okay, but like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were numerous other pickups that had that tucked out of the way. Um, mm -hmm. I think I even have a picture of it. Yeah, like it's way below. I mean, this one has the step too, so it just kind of hangs down. Yeah, it's definitely down there below. Like, if we're in Moab, we're definitely crunching that on a rock mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at some point. But you know how many the, guys are going to Moab their Tundras? I was going to say, like, I mean, I know that, you know, I think I think people kind of got freaked out a little bit when the new Tundra lost its uh, leaf springs. Yeah. Yeah, like, people got really concerned about that. And it's like, I mean, people aren't really towing a ton with their Tundra. And right. I feel like of, of all the Toyotas that you know, are in the lineup. I mean, yeah, you will probably get some people off-roading a Tundra, but I mean, let's be honest, like the two big ones are the Tacoma and the Forerunner, you know? So Absolutely. I think, yeah, see, like that interior is good. Like I I, I had a Tundra, oh man, um, maybe a year ago. And Dude, they, they've been out a while. So like even, out, yeah, even reviewing this, I was like, I feel like I'm the last person to have a first impression of the Tundra. Like, Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's okay. I mean, they, they you know, Toyota's also had its inventory problems. So, I mean, it's not like they're everywhere yet. Um, right. But, you know, I I like the Tundra. I wasn't, I wasn't like wowed and super impressed by it. I actually kind of like the old truck better, to tell you the truth. Um, but, you know, I think what the new Tundra has going for it is like, you know, that new cabin is great. Um, I think the materials are a lot better. I love the new Toyota inf infotainment system. Um, okay. whether that be on the tundra or the new crown or uh you know on the new um grand highlander the toyota did such a stellar job redesigning that infotainment system it's clean it's crisp it's easy to use and it finally feels modern right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it it finally looks modern too like <laughs> yeah oh yeah 100 percent agree um I guess my my one gripe I had, this is such a nitpicky thing because I'm a total sucker for like ergonomics. Um, but I was bummed that they got rid of the old Tundra's like giant climate control knobs that you could use. Oh. Like, I remember that was like one of the selling points was like, yeah, you can like leave your work your leather work glove on and like turn the air on. Like without yeah. I remember that was like totally a selling point of it. But um, you know, it's a it's a it's a good truck. It's not my first pick, but um I don't know. People will buy them. So base price is sixty eight five for the TRD Pro. As tested was $73,000. I mean. Which 73 is the new 50. Yeah. I was going to say that doesn't like that's not super surprising for a, a full size truck these days. But I don't know, man. I I'm content with my $7,000 Subaru route back. <laughs> I can't fathom spending 70 grand on a, a, a truck. But people do well, it. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah, speaking of actual trucks, I I want to get this one out of the way just because it's so big. Mm -hmm. 
is the Ram 2500 Rebel we had. Oh, I love that thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you? Because yes, I don't get 100%, it. 100%. 100%. I... Ram makes my favorite... Um, I should be careful how I say this. Uh, <laughs> Ram, it used to be Ford, but Ram, I think, now makes my favorite heavy duty truck. Um, I had this, ex- I had that exact same truck back in January, January or February, um, for a week. And what's special about that one is that one has the Cummins turbo diesel in it, right? Um, which I think was ten thousand dollars on the Monroney. It was really expensive to get that engine. Um, but um, you're making almost a thousand pound feet of torque. Uh, in the week that I had it, I probably put, I don't know, 300 miles, 400 miles of like highway miles on it. And I'll right. tell you what, that thing on the highway, even with like the all-terrain tires that are on it, cause it's the rebel, um, which is a new trim for the 2,500 heavy duty, um, sitting on the highway, I went, I took it skiing. So I took it on a long ski trip and sitting okay on the highway at like 75 miles an hour with cruise control and that engine just like purring along um <laughs> it was such a such a comfortable truck i love the way it looks i love the way it sounds i love all of ram's tech um yeah the screen was huge the screen is huge though i do think that you know i do I'm, i am getting a little bit tired with you connect i think they need to start pushing you connect five out to a lot of these trucks because i don't think that one has it yet um but yeah i love the 25 that's probably truthfully been one of my favorite vehicles i've tested this year alone was that 2500 heavy duty rubble and i will point out column shifter yes 100 percent. that's it's not that's not a thing a, in a lot of modern no, trucks it's, it's, it's not it's just a very to me it's a very very desirable truck like i if i had to go buy a new heavy duty truck that that's like the exact spec i would get right now so I think what messed with me is so many of the trucks I drove throughout this time have more (laughs) off-roady suspensions where Mm -hmm. this still has a a workhorse truck suspension underneath it. Oh, yeah. And so it felt stiff being Mm -hmm. unloaded. Mm -hmm. Like it probably needed. um, Well, God, what was it years ago? I was at Ford for an event years ago and they had us drive a Super Duty dually. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And they had these giant rubber mats in the bed to simulate mm-hmm. a, a load so you could actually feel the comfort of the truck while loaded versus driving yeah. it unloaded. Um, of course, they didn't have it unloaded. It was always loaded. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like I kind of wish Ram had had a mm-hmm. bunch of weight in the bed of it to kind of like smooth out some of those more harsh responses from the from the suspension. Mm-hmm. But it did have the uh, engine brake on a button activated switch, which was kind yep. of fun. So nice. that was. <laughs> nice. I think the Ram heavy duty diesel has that too. Now that I think about it, um, yeah, yeah, that was an awesome truck. I love that truck. It, it's so big. Uh, this one was ninety one thousand dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say that was that was almost six figures. Been driving it on the off road course where it just destroyed every obstacle that came into its face. Um, was interesting in the sense that i think i had to make multiple four five six point turns to get around some of the narrow obstacles because i mean that's a big boy and you've got a surround view camera on it but you know yeah Yeah. at least it was at least it's column shift and made sense when you got into something you had to make sure you hit the right button and moved it the right way and like at least i knew what i was doing um i'll i'm a little more I have way more experience driving big stuff because that's all I have, like the Suburban, sure, the sure. Sequoia. I only had to make a couple of three-point turns oh, um, nice. at the very, but at those very tight spots, like going one way and then yep. you know, the the last one out. But like, yeah, yeah, I made that in the the power. Like there were multiple vehicles over that. Um, they let me. I talked the Jeep guys into letting me take the power, or the, I'm going to call it power wagon. That's not what it is. The 2500 Rebel. Mm-hmm. They let me take it on the Rock Garden nice i bet that was fun and i was like please 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 and then i got um the two jeep reps that were there and i can't remember their names right now Mm -hmm. um i got their permission so i didn't just do it on my own (laughs) um and then they radioed back and they were like hey when they're when the 2500 rebel gets there let them go through the rock guard robbie i idled it up and then let the idle of the truck pull it across sure sure fantastic yeah 
Oh yeah. So you were probably like, I mean, you're probably bouncing around a little bit, but I'm sure it was just like very planted for the most part. Like a hundred percent. It was yeah. delightful in how easy it was. Oh man. Um, Good for you. What do you got next? I'm going to skip the frontier. Cause I feel like we've talked about it before mm -hmm. and my negatives with it are the same. <laughs> um, the heavier ceiling feel, even though like this time it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think because I knew to expect it, I don't remember it being as heavy. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was like a, it was, I don't know if I'm more used to it. The resolution on the front and rear cameras is just kind of awful compared to yeah. like, it and it's something that only comes to light when you're literally hopping between these vehicles so quickly. Mm -hmm. But like, it looks like night windows 95 is the camera <laughs> that has powered. Like it's terrible, but it's a known issue. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, the next up, the one I definitely want to talk about is the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. Mm, that's, I will set this one out because I unfortunately did not get to drive that one. So I'll let you well, take it. The Trail Boss, the f early in the morning, they were only letting us take the Trail Boss on the green course, which was the easier of the two courses. Mm -hmm. um, but about mid morning, somebody went, whoa, 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 no, it can do the blue course too. Um, and so that's when I actually got time in it. It was once you could go on the harder course. Um, things I like about it, very reasonably sized truck. It's not too big. It's not too small. Mm -hmm. It's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. The turbo four-cylinder it has. So it's the same size engine. I want to say it's a two. It's either a two, three or two, seven. But there are three different tunes for that engine. And the mm -hmm. trail boss gets the mid tune. Mm -hmm. which means even if you're over revving it, you're ramping it up, you're doing whatever, there's still a higher tune package that exists. So you're probably not tasking the engine overall, but mm -hmm. it was very torquey. It did a really good job. It pulled me through the rock garden. Um, I didn't have to put a lot of throttle into it, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, you do get sliders with it um, with because of the trail boss. There's a tailgate storage compartment, which I liked um is that the one that's in the like when you fold down the tailgate it's that little pop thing that opens yeah up? yeah i think that's genius that's one of my favorite innovations i've seen this year well because like every toyota guy ever has modified our lift gate or yeah, our tailgates on perfect. land that. cruisers and lexuses to do that anyway so mm -hmm. here it is from the factory and literally it's just these little these little things are what releases it oh okay so once you fold it back down and you make those things uh, go parallel with the line of the truck, it's locked. Mm -hmm. So moving those to the side is what would open that. Hmm. Um, what I'm curious about is if like, don't put anything in there you really care about because obviously like it's just a couple of things. It wasn't key actuated. So I don't know if you fully lock the truck, if the tailgate's then locked, if that you can't get to it, I don't know. Um, that is a great question. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, really curious about that. I have a feeling somebody has thought through that process because it, yeah, it's, it's Chevy. A, it's a it's a great looking truck too. I love the way the new Colorado looks. So the outside looks good. I had some issues with the inside. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of, it's there. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It it reminds me a little bit of Maverick, and I'm not mm -hmm. a super fan of the Maverick interior. Mm -hmm. I know the Maverick interior is very spacious and it's very simplistic which mm -hmm. is kind of where I felt like this went to. Um, it just took me a little time to get used to it. Uh, I didn't, the seat quality where there were, everything was cloth. I was like, wait, I bought a trail boss here. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I want the good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the rear seat leg room is a little limited, but that's where I'm just thinking about my giant children. <laughs> um, so it's scraped more than most of the other vehicles on the, the diff, on the blue hard off-road course. The only thing that that drug more was the compass. Um, mm -hmm. And again, exhaust is not tucked out of the way. And the sliders, while they do protect the sides, they don't act as any kind of sidestep. Again, oh, I've got shit. short people in my life. Yeah. So I'm always kind of thinking about like, now also like, there's a reason it drug a lot. It's not very high. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if it could have a little bit more lift, um, but overall, like, it, it's only 42. Mm -hmm. so I feel like that's a, that's a solid, not a lot of money. Yeah. Like, and turbo turbo four, like mm -hmm. with a, with a fun tune away. I, I really like the uh, design of those rock rails. 
they're I nice. Think, I think they look really, really cool. It's not just like the simple thin black ones you see on trucks. Like I like the right. kind of, you know, that I don't know what is that a hexagon, a pentagon, the shape. Sure, trapezoid. You know, it looks it looks pretty. I think it looks it looks unique. It looks like sporty. So here's a fun question for you: Is Trail Boss one word or two? Trail Boss is two. Mm -mm. No, it's got to be two. Hold on. Not not according to the Maroni. Here's my favorite part is what? on the truck itself. It's listed vertically as two different words, trail and then boss. But if you look at if you look at GM's website, it is a one word. Or Chevy site. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Cause I'm seeing menu, I'm seeing cars.com listings that have it as two words. Let's oh, see. Chevrolet does not denote it as two words two come on lt aha yeah it is two words trail boss Where? baby go to build Dave. your own go to build your own trail so boss, this is this is my own. issue then the maroni's wrong because it's one word on the maroni that they gave us <laughs> you should just take a red pen and <laughs> I am. Crazy. I'm. I'm. I, I'm going to send a very strongly worded email to Chevrolet and never get another <laughs> press card from. Oh wait, I've never had GM press cards. <laughs> you, need move, you, need, you need to move somewhere out of uh, out of the the Great Plains. You know, I used to get press cards, mm -hmm. and just times have changed, and people don't we'll see, send them we'll anymore. See. Which is funny because my audience now is way bigger than it was when I was pulling press cars. Well, let's let's we'll try and see if we can get you in some again. I mean, I'd rather have you get press cars than like social media influencers. Oh my god, that sounds like I don't mean to like badmouth them, but like I feel like a lot of manufacturers are giving cars to literally anyone that has a social a following. following, even if they don't do anything with vehicles. Um, yep. So I think. Yeah, we'll we sh we'll see if we can get you in some press cars because I think you definitely with the content that you produce. I mean, hell, what episode number is this? Oh uh, god, one one sixty seven. Yeah, I mean, you're almost at you're you're getting closer to two hundred episodes. You've had a lot of heavy hitters on your on your show as guests. You know, I mean, <laughs> we'll see what we, we'll see what we can do. I'll see if I can uh, rattle some cages and try and get. We got three years worth of content at this point. Exactly. So. Exactly. <laughs> so next up is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 AEV Bison, which I think is the longest name of anything I drove. <laughs> Wait, I didn't know they had the AEV Bison there. Yeah. Oh, so, I thought it was just a Silverado Trail Boss. I should have known this. No, Silverado oh. ZR2. And then you get the AEV Bison package, yeah. which yeah. the AEV Bison edition is only eight it's seventy eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. um, that's steel bumpers uh unique wheels you get the aev front and rear bumpers you get the aev wheels and there is a upgraded suspension i believe mm -hmm. um and then the size of the tire is also up as well um Shoot. i wish i could so totally quick quick things i pulled off it real fast obviously 6.2 liter v8 oh my gosh <laughs> So good. Um, there's hard recovery points integrated to the front and rear bumpers, so you don't have to go uh, grab something. The exhaust is actually tucked out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, again, sliders, front and rear locking differentials, mm -hmm. more than the Tundra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're technically a little more expensive than the Tundra because that was in the low 70s. This is coming in at 82. Um, I did take photos of the exhaust tucked out of the way um, because it, it actually is tucked. Mm -hmm. um, and now, of course, my mute, my, uh, there it is from the side. Uh, I should have reor I should have organized my albums a little better. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Yeah. You can, you can totally see the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Up out of the way. The, to be honest, the only thing that's going to drag back there is going to be your spare or your hitch. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot. Nice job. Thanks. I try, I try to do good work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so your front and rear lockers, you have downhill cruise control or the crawl control. It's a very spacious cabin. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite part, ample cup holders surrounding the driver. <laughs> Call it dad mode. Call it what you want. Mm -hmm. 
um, you have access to at least four cup holders around. So, but, so, and you have adequate leg room in the back. My mm -hmm. negatives though, the hood bulges. Um, and I tried to take a photo of them and I don't know if I did it justice. Does it block your vision when you're looking off to the side, like on the fenders? Yeah. Like if you're trying to like look out over the edge of the hood, mm -hmm. it, it, it rides up a little bit. Um, and Alexis, Alex has that too. Does it? Mm -hmm. well it's it's weird just because like it's it's bulgy on the hood but then it's mm -hmm. not if that makes sense mm -hmm. here you go i'm gonna i got kind of a close from a three quarter here there's these two black bulges in the middle yeah that rise up but then like the hood itself there's like a ridge of the white here as well mm -hmm. so like as it falls away but the part that drove me nuts and i'm gonna give you the whole photo album here mm -hmm. is now nope, that's did I not shoot the underside of the hood? There is nothing on the under the side of the hood that makes those bulges need to be there. Just the styling thing. Yeah. It's that's literally a, like the topic. throwback to the cowl hoods from the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. That's 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 such a that's it's definitely an interesting like design trend these days. I mean, like a lot of trucks and SUVs are doing that where they do like the kind of the domed hood, but off to the sides where it's like kind of like flat in the middle but like domed on the sides so yeah you can kind of see yeah yeah just like that just like that yeah you got like so they just they have these but... bulges <laughs> you know what if it was making room for the engine i'm like yes mm -hmm. when you look at the bottom of the hood there is no it's perfectly flat across the whole bottom of the hood like there's no indentation at all mm -hmm. Oops, so at... you got you got some fire department going by so it did take me a little bit to get used to the gear shifter on this thing. It was mm -hmm. buttons and like, so obviously park, but then reverse is down on the side. You got to hit the button to put mm -hmm. it in reverse. Um, three point turns were not fun in this while I was in the woods. You're like trying um, to figure it out. Like what was going on? <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure more time with it, I would figure it out better. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, just a pain in the butt, but yeah. for coming in low eighties, mm -hmm. crazy capable. Mm -hmm. So, if you should need, you should call Chevy. You should need to get some time for that. One. You need a road trip that one. Like, yeah, no, that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, next up is my freaking All Star. It was my favorite thing I drove the whole time, and my pictures. I don't think I have good pictures of it because when I went to take pictures the second morning. Mm -hmm. it was set aside and we were not allowed to touch it hmm. um, for oh, whatever okay. reason. But the F-150 Raptor R. That's a great shot. Thanks. Dude, like it, you got you to post some of these to Mama, man. That's a great <laughs> shot. Look part, at that. Part of it was I was writing notes and scribbling and running and they were like, social media contest. And I was like, ah, I'll do that later. And just yeah. I never got to. It's tricky. I mean, there's a lot going on and like it's it's hard to... You know, if you post on the fly, you you kind of miss out on stuff. But yeah, those are those are some great shots. Thank you. Uh, hundred and eleven thousand nine hundred and thirty five dollars. Yeah. Five point two liter supercharged V8. So I did a video with Zach in this truck. Mm -hmm. I drove mm -hmm. it and he was like, come drive it with me. We'll do a video. And I was like, we don't have a script where you have nothing. Like, what do you want to talk about? Oh, so you just want to take it? Yeah, we did a, a quick nice. one take. Um, and pretty much I ended the video in like the first 15 seconds because he was like, what do you think? And I was like, this is amazing. That's all you needed. Need stop the video. So <laughs> Zach, with his good sense of humor, did his fake credit roll and then actually launched into the rest of the, the video. <laughs> but holy crap. And like, I know we just talked about 5.2 supercharged V8. And it matters. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. The suspension on a Raptor is so good. And and I know like TRX Raptor like the the there's an argument about like what's the more thing that matters is it the engine is it the suspension like and this truck and every other Raptor I've driven it's always been about the suspension because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't you don't feel anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it soaks everything up it Robbie mm -hmm. I drove so fast yeah on like I tried to be appropriate about where I burst the speed off-road in this thing because I didn't want to risk any, but like I didn't want to risk the guys on the course. I didn't want to risk running into anybody else. Like I tried to be a mature adult 
But as soon as you get in this thing, it is absolutely hilarious and so much fucking mm-hmm. fun. Like it's so good. Yeah. It, I think, and I think what's, I've driven the, I drove the last Raptor, like last generation Raptor. And then I had a TRX a while ago, but yeah. Um, I mean, the TRX is just a silly truck. Like I just don't get, I mean, I understand why they did that. Cause they need to have bills to pay for EV development and stuff. But like right. the Ram 1500 TRX is such a silly bro truck. Um, and as glorious as that supercharged V8 is, um, I would probably rather have the Raptor because I'm sure it gets more than eight miles per gallon. You know, <laughs> like uh, what, I can't attest to that. <laughs> Get to yeah, I don't know. I don't know else. what fuel economy is, but like you know, the F150 Raptor uh, R with that V8. I mean, how much horsepower is that? That's probably high fives. Um, that's a good question. See, this you know, is the more in depth things I need to write. No, you're good, but like, I mean, Ram TRX. I mean, you're at you're north of 700, and it reflects that in the fuel economy that you get. And again, obviously, so you're not buying Ra- Raptor that. R is 700 horsepower as well at okay. 6,650 RPMs. Jeez, I need to get caught up on my truck specs. I'm slacking. <laughs> so. This did come up in the video that I did with Zach, where he was like, I drove a TRX. He goes, I absolutely giggled at it. And I was like, it, I can, I know why people enjoy it. Mm-hmm. The supercharger whine and the TRX is so loud that I'm so much of an old man now <laughs> that after five minutes, and I drove it with um, Tom, who you yeah. already did a podcast with today. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tom was like, it's pretty loud. And I was like, it's too loud. Like <laughs> where the supercharger and the Raptor are, you can hear it if you like want to, yeah. But at the same time, I didn't really hear it. Sure, sure. And and I find the Raptors reasonably sized after being in a TRX. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I mean, sounds TRX, very odd to say. TRX is just gigantic. I got it stuck in my bank's drive-through <laughs> when I had it. I was trying to go through that, and I was I was that one jackass and like a bro truck and you know i was trying to go into the drive through i think to use the atm or something and the tires just got stuck because it was too wide for the it was so embarrassing you're like trying to put it in reverse and you're like i'm like trying to (laughs) because remember it makes it makes a supercharger noise in reverse too right um the next one i want to talk about is also va powered Mm mm-hmm and it, I feel like it's old news, but the Rubicon 392 20th anniversary, mm-hmm. it's still good. It's Which still was still good. crowned, that was picked as our mama's favorite off-roader this year for the rally. Um, Which, and I totally understand why people pick it. The Raptor R is better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's huge, but it's better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it's my personal take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, first of all, things that jeep get right the ability to have the key holder between the two cup holders so you just put your key in it so when you're out on the trails Mm -hmm. you can hop in and out of the truck it's not that big a deal the key is always right there it's got a specific place it doesn't rattle that's a good point that that makes sense yeah that's a huge thing Mm -hmm. well it's not a huge thing it is a thing Mm -hmm. um the engine noises and the power in the field do all the things you wanted to do in a 392 the sway bar disconnect is crazy easy to use put it in four Mm -hmm. low hit the button it mm-hmm. disconnects when you go fast though it will reconnect mm-hmm. even in four low after what like 25 miles an hour yeah it was like 25 or 30 miles an hour it was like yeah. i can't imagine driving 45 50 and having that, your front sway bar just loose like oh yikes <laughs> <Nope>. yeah <laughs> so I'm glad my, it's <laughs> my only negatives to the truck obviously are the price because mm-hmm. the one we drove was ninety five thousand dollars mm-hmm mm-hmm Oof. yeah buddy that's that's a lot of money that is um especially when you consider a base wrangler is what in the mid 30s or um so? i'm trying to do this all off just shooting from the hip like i, I don't know if it's mid 30s anymore i mean like just like a regular sport probably like a two-door yeah um so let's regulars. quickly go into jeep.com uh, let's see Build in price. I'm not building the gra- the Wagoneers. <laughs> Which that's adorable that they even have those on there. It's like, you should build these. No, 
That's a house cost. That is a house cost. Um, yeah, yeah I, for sport two door. It's thirty one eight. So just to give you an idea, you're looking at a at a difference between thirty one thousand all the way up to almost a hundred grand. That's a huge <laughs> difference. Like just the the range of that. I wonder if you could still get the postal service Jeep. You used to be able to get the postal service. Oh, the right hand drive one. Yeah. Uh, let's see if they have it for 2023. Um, wow, they have like seen it. High tide. No, I don't see it anymore. Maybe Dude, the high like my favorite part is there's somebody near near me with a high tide Jeep and that that green color that's on the website. And I see my nice. I was like, oh, tide coming in. <laughs> like, you know how far away we are from the tide. I um I liked when they did the um what was the uh there was one other the Islander. Do you remember they briefly did the yeah. Islander? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. That was my favorite special edition Jeep that came out like a year ago. Yeah, it it was right when High Tide came out. Yeah, yeah. It was so cool. I'm a sucker it, for the old Wrangler Islander, like with the like little like Polynesian logo TV. Yeah. Logo. Like, oh, I'd give a kidney to have one of those. I think they're so cool. Well, you've seen the gold dragon edition, right? Yes, I have. Okay. There is somebody Call here in town. Have you seen the Call of Duty Modern Warfare version? Yes. Yeah. But they have the gold dragon Jeep, but with they've taken the dragon off the side. And I was like, I know what that is. Like, just because <laughs> you pulled the dragon, like, I know you have the most racist Jeep. Like, I'm aware. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, that one's good. Um, the next one I have is also another Jeep. Actually, my other negative was the suspension on the 392 doesn't soak up as many bumps as the Bronco Raptor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which we can we can talk about Bronco Raptor real quick. Um, my pictures of it also suck because for whatever reason, both Fords were parked the second day and I couldn't go take the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, did I share the correct screen? Yeah, I hope I did. Um, it is... First of all, it's only $77,000, mm -hmm. which sounds ludicrous as a price by itself. But when you compare it to 95000 of the 392, mm -hmm. that's in 20 grand's a big deal all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not just screwing through there. So the interesting thing about the Bronco Raptor was I'd driven it and mm -hmm. I chased Joel when he got into the Bronco Raptor and I hopped into the 392 and I was like, you know what? We're going to chase each other around this little off-road course. Yeah, yeah. And he could go so much faster because of the way the suspension just soaks all of the difficult stuff up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love driving it. It was so quick. Yeah. Like the Raptor R, I drove the fastest around the whole course. This mm -hmm. was second fastest. <laughs> nice. My only issue with it, though, is like the off-road camera would turn off when I was going too fast. And I was like, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing stuff. You stay on. <laughs> like, they, need to, they need to figure out a way, and I'm sure it's some antiquated, you know, NHTSA federal mandate that probably no mandate ever has used it before, but they need to figure out a way to give an exception for like when you have an off-road mode engaged. Um, I don't know if, if it's if like, four lows on, leave yeah, me four alone. Lows on that the off-road camera stays on because yeah. like. I know that some vehicles it'll stay on up to a certain amount of speed, but like after 15, 20 seconds, it cuts out and it's like, you know, or if you have the surround view camera, when I drove the Pat with a 2,500 rebel, like that was, I was trying to use the surround view camera. Then every time I shifted in reverse or drive to make a three point turn, I had to go back into the menu and find the surround view camera. Like I wish yeah. that there were easier, um, like an easier cadence where it's just like you turn it on once or if you are you know driving on an off-road course like if you're up on if you're up in the north woods like bombing around through some trees uh you've got a chance to oh yeah there you go you know you can leave that camera on for a couple minutes at a time and it doesn't like you know, they've got to figure something out for that right but it is that, is that cactus gray or area 51 oh man I think it's, I, I'm trying to tell. I think it's cactus gray. I think it's cactus gray. I, I think you're right. But like, it's so cool. I, Look at that thing. It, and it just moves through everything. Yeah. 
And I felt like he took that slow. He could have gone so much quicker. Yeah. Than that. <laughs> like, that's awesome. It was, it's just, yeah. So if I'm buying one, mm -hmm. I'm buying a 390 Wrangler. Oh, man. I, so I haven't driven the 392, but I mean, I've driven more than a handful of Wranglers and I've driven the Bronco. I love the Bronco. Um, the Wrangler to me is still so, even though it's like unstoppable off road, it is so uncomfortable day to day. I couldn't have one as a daily driver. Like I just oh god, I can't either. It's, it's, an, awful, <laughs> it's an awful highway car. I mean, oh. I you know the Bronco is not you know leaps and bounds better by any chance, but like with the Wrangler, you're constantly making those adjustments in the steering wheel on the highway. There's like no active lane keeping assist or following assist. No, none of that. Now, um, whereas I feel like the Bronco, like my wife and I did a, I don't know, it was probably four and a half hour round trip, highway trip in the Bronco when I had it, and it was infinitely better, infinitely better on the on the on the highway. The one thing that still, and I I don't know if it's a quirk. Mm -hmm. the hard tops on the broncos and off-road conditions creak and groan oh interesting as you're going through like i've never heard it and I, I haven't i didn't hear these jeeps right um but those the bronco raptor did it and the the now the ones i were in last time were pre-production i remember the last time i drove them up mm -hmm. there um they made a point to say these are pre-production mm -hmm. um it doesn't surprise me yeah Even but my my winner of everything, yeah, three ninety two twenty. No, it's not oh, the three ninety two. What is it's that? The, the... It's the Rubicon four by E twentieth anniversary oh, yeah. AEV. Yes, <laughs> this is the longest name of everything I drove because that it's technically twenty twenty three Jeep Wrangler Rubicon four by E twentieth anniversary AEV. <laughs> I feel like I must have missed so much either because I was running around or people were I don't remember seeing that Jeep at all there. I feel terrible. Really? No, seriously. Like every time I went to the off-road course, I did not see it. It must have been like taken out or something like that. But... So we had Nina Barlow on the show uh mm -hmm. got it in actual time, probably about a month ago, in episode mm -hmm. time, I'm not sure. <laughs> um and she has dominated rebel i shouldn't say dominate she has won a rebel rally in a four by e wrangler before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and That's so true. she she was talking about how she's driven the 392s um but she actually feels like this is the quickest wrangler that exists because you can put it in e-saver mode mm -hmm. which turns on the turbo four cylinder and the ev motor kicks in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. off the line and i did what she told me to do put it in in four auto um, put an e-saver on and then launched it and i launched it on the dirt and had so much fun oh i bet um I it bet. was so quick for for an electric vehicle but again you can put it in full electric mode mm -hmm. which is how i actually completed the course mm -hmm. was in full electric mode had an absolute blast did everything i wanted to do no engine noise you get the whine of the electric motor now because everything is required to make some noise right yeah yeah um but again sway bar disconnects in this one um you get a forward facing view camera with tire tread line so even though you're mm -hmm. looking on the camera it will show where your tires are going to go amazing mm -hmm. same slot in the cup holder for the jeep key <laughs> the only negative i had on this truck was that it cost seventy five thousand dollars yeah, well, you got to remember too, like the the four by e just off the get go is quite a bit more expensive than a regular regular limited, and I'm sure, yeah, adding all that stuff onto it, yeah, raising that price per kilometer. Are those? Uh, let me see if I get my numbers right. Are those thirty fives? I think at least thirty fives, if not thirty sevens. That's such a badass looking Jeep. But it's AEV wheels. You get the mm -hmm. AEV front bumper with the winch. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a rear bumper as well. Um, you also get suspension component upgrades. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I took photos of those. Um, you get AEV suspension components, mm -hmm. which are, I believe these are the back. Yeah, look at those. Um, Man, yeah, they're Bilsteins, I think. 
they're AEVs, but with, with Bill Seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And I had the fronts with the springs as well that I captured mm -hmm. and you can actually see the Bill Seen logo from this angle. Nice. It's, it's little, it's little, but yeah, it super good. quiet truck, super fun truck, very comfortable in an off-road situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have time to drive stuff on the road at all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> as as much as I want to, like, and I know like we're coming up on on lengthy time. The only other thing I would talk about, I drove a bunch of SUVs. Mm -hmm. So Honda Pilot. I still have it as Trail Boss in my notes. Trail Sport. Honda <laughs> Pilot Trail Sport. Um all these sub brands get confusing after they all yeah. sound the same. Trail Sport, Path Trail Hunter, Over Trail. It's like uh, Pathfinder Rock Creek. Mm -hmm. It's still way better than the last one. It is. I think it's still way. I love the Pathfinder. I think it's a great family vehicle. Um, My only issue with it was the traction control, stability control was yeah. nannying me when um, I was off road. And I was like, how do I turn you off? Like, yeah, go yeah. away. <laughs> like, yeah. And I couldn't get it to turn off. Mm -hmm. um, but the one I like the best. Mm -hmm. Was this Kia Telluride? Yeah, yeah. And the reason is because I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. Like it, the, the Telluride. I went for a ride in that with you, and we took it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that was. I was remarkably comfortable. And it, it's not. It doesn't look like anything from the outside. If you were like, "Oh, that's the off-road X Pro," like no, it just looks like a Telluride. Mm -hmm. Um, it does have the Continental Terrain Contact all-terrain tires, mm -hmm. which I am unfamiliar with. Um, I drove them on uh, the Kia and the Honda Pilot had the Continentals, mm -hmm. um, which I don't have an issue with Continental tires at all, but I just were unfamiliar with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can you pull the full screen? Um, which part? The picture. Am I not big enough? Whoa. Okay. Maybe Hold on. Oh, Are no, you not full screen? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good shot. Yeah, it's it's nice that they. I don't know because like when you you know if you look at Hyundai's XRT trims and they have that on like Santa Fe, they have that right. on uh, Palisade now, I believe. Like they add a lot more styling tweaks, but yes. purely styling, nothing, nothing mechanical. You still get street tires. You still get same old suspension um i like the approach kia took here i do wish there was maybe just a hair a bit more styling differentiation just to make it look because it's it's such a rugged confident looking vehicle to begin with um you know maybe put a different grill on it or which i think it does get a little like this grill the silver down here mm -hmm. i don't think is normal for the tellurides mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but, I think the LED fog lights and the grill are probably exclusive to that trim. Yeah, there. and I, I took the ground clearance photo. I was like, there's none. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. These weeds are not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> but but then again, at the end of the day, like, um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to remember, though, that like 90% of the people that buy that X-Pro, they're just going to be doing like soft off-roading. So right. That's probably, that's probably all they need. I mean, there's only what, and, like, half an inch suspension lift? Did they do I, any suspension lift on that? I couldn't find anything in the materials that I was looking up. They might um, they might not have. They might have just thrown ATs on and added a skid plate or two and called it a day. I don't know that I saw skid plates underneath. <laughs> Other not. than the normal <laughs> one in the front. But what I will say is like it was the most comfortable ride mm -hmm. of any of those SUVs. Mm -hmm. It was so mm -hmm. refined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the pilot was not bad. The Pathfinder, they were not bad. They didn't ride bad. Mm -hmm. This just rode better. It was mm -hmm. very comfortable. And it doesn't have the best engine. It has the least amount of power. It has the least amount of torque out of that V6, mm -hmm. which is starting to get pretty aged as V6 engine yeah. goes. Yeah, they need to... I'm very curious to see what they're going to do when the next... Oh, I mean, we've got EV9 coming, but like I think... I mean, the gas right. tunnel ride is going to be around forever because they can't sell those quick enough. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what they do for the powertrain because like Kia doesn't have a V8 right <laughs> now. 
Nope. Do you remember they used to make the uh, Borrego with a V8? You used to yeah. Make there are Borregos by me still that I see all the time and still want to take pictures. And... That was a body on frame vehicle too, which is nuts to think about. But Yeah. But no, oh, yeah, there you go. if you're in the market, I highly recommend the Telluride. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, James. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, and you know what? For our Mama's Favorites Award, everyone that attended the rally who voted, they picked that as the Mama's Favorite Family Vehicle of the Year Award. So that was kind of neat that the Telluride beat out, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 other vehicles. That it was a lot. Win. Yeah. The Rolls didn't win? No. <laughs> Four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars for that Rolls Royce Ghost, the black badge. I mean, that was pretty. That was a pretty sexy car, but like, man, that's two times the amount that I just paid for a house, which is just nuts. You know, it's right, like, exactly. Like, <laughs> like God. <laughs> but hey, you know what? If you uh, if you got the funds and you know how to do the tax loopholes, I mean, more power to you, and you can have one of those. So. Do you want to talk G GX real fast? Yeah, we can talk because we are very late. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I was in Austin, Texas last week for the debut. What? The Lexus GX, which was completely redesigned, as well as the new TX. And the TX, we'll just ten seconds span on that. The t the TX is essentially a Grand Highlander, badged as a Lexus, a lot more posh, a lot better, you know. A little bit unique styling elements just to make it, you know, blend in with the Lexus language. But Lexus hasn't had a dedicated three row. This is their three row offering. That's an actual three row. Um, I'm six foot two and I found the back seat to be very, very dramatically better than the three row RX that they used to offer. Um, so yeah, that's the TX that goes on sale this fall. But the the vehicle that I think really stole the show was the new gx um and you know there are lots of teasers of it we saw for for weeks and then you know somebody leaked out images but uh you want to talk about a uh a knockout product i mean look at that thing i mean it is so this is the badass. premium, even though this image is tagged over trail. This is not the over trail. This that's not the, the premium. That's, that's the premium. Um, this is the over trail. Yep, correct. So I don't like the over trail in this color. Oh, you don't? That was the that's a great color for it. Kind of like I, tan. Like I don't like the lines and the way, like there's like, I know this is a shadow, but, like, there's a line, there's a line, there's a line. Yeah, it really shows off the character lines on it. Mm -hmm. But when I look at it in this color, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I love the boxier shape. I, I I enjoy it from the back as well. Like, it, mm -hmm. it feels like we got a modern 70 series wagon, but it's yeah, a Lexus. Yeah. No, I... I... I agree 100%. That was actually my first thought when they pulled the covers off of it was... um. You know, I was amazed by not how not only how like boxy and bold and commanding it looked, but I was like, man, this thing's got kind of a retro kick to it. I mean, it's got yeah. that I it's got such a desirable silhouette, regardless of from what angle you view it at. I mean, it is I think compared to the uh outgoing GX, which was on sale for well over a day. Um <laughs> forever. Yeah, literally forever. I mean, the new GX is it looks incredible. And I it's not going to be a volume seller by any means for Lexus, but the ones that they do sell, they're going to make a lot of cash on. Um, and I think the biggest, the two biggest things that I think are worth talking about are the fact that the V8's gone. So yep. that old fired V8 is gone, which I mean, do take how you want it, but like in place is the same engine that's in the Lexus LX. And that's that twin turbo 3.4 liter, which is a rocket, especially off-road. Um, so that's well, and, there. So what's up? And it's the global platform. So like everything shares. Yeah. So that's like TNT, Tundra, TNT. Sequoia, LX, yeah. GX. Tacoma. Yeah. I mean, like it's that just goes to show how I think promising of a platform that is that you have literally all the way from the Tacoma, base Tacoma, all the way up to a six figure Lexus LX. I mean, and it's rugged. It's it's durable. It's that body on frame. It's that ladder frame 
I'm sorry, it's that ladder type architecture. I mean, it's just, it's now is a perfect time for Lexus to take the GX and make it again, as much of a body on frame, badass, tough, tall, commanding, boxy looking off rotor. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, the, it's interesting too, because it, um, it debuts this new, uh, they call it Project Overtrail or the Overtrail Project. And essentially yeah. it's the first time Lexus has had a dedicated off-road trim for one of their products. And, you know, as we know, and I know you've seen them, I've seen plenty of them, but people do off-road their Lexuses, you know, like Lexi. What? Lexi, Lexi, Lexus. Lexi. Product. I've seen plenty of GXs. I mean, you know this, like LXs. Um, I've even seen RXs on all-terrain tires that actually look surprisingly good. Um, but yeah, the the new Overtrail, uh, it's offered an Overtrail and Overtrail Plus. And you get uh, Toyo Open Country all-terrain tires. I was just writing about this today, so I'm going off memory. Toyo Open Country all-terrain tires. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's back my there. Lexus off-road. <laughs> look at that. God, I love that. I love that roof rack too, that full rack. That's badass. It is handy. It just needs a rooftop tent sitting on top of it. If anybody's mm -hmm. got one that they're not doing anything with. <laughs> Jeff. Wait, no, Jeff uses his. That's not okay. That's uh, not, I shouldn't call him out for that. But no, over over trail would be cool. I mean, you get a you get a um you do get a rear locker, you get the kinetic. Yep advanced suspension which um, is an ekdss yep yep ekdss uh yeah you, you you get the you know multi-terrain select downhill crawl control um you get the unique styling tweaks um a couple nice things on the inside skid plates um yeah i think it's badass i it it makes me wish i made more money because that would be a super right cool everyday car and i and the thing i keep telling people is more so with the lexus gx than the new sequoia that came out but you know if and when and that's in a big quotations if and when toyota does give us another land cruiser um i would be willing to bet you that a lot of what you see on that gx is going to be exactly on the land cruiser except yeah. toyota language um and yeah, I mean it's it's so cool. I was really amazed. I mean it's it's really a complete departure from the last GX when you look at it from a hundred percent. There's first of all, we got we got rid of the Predator grill. Yeah. Oh man, it looks so good without it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's, it's funny though when you look at the side silhouette of the G, of the new GX, um, because it's wider, it's taller. I can't remember if it's longer, but it does have much shorter overhangs compared to the last GX for, you know, okay. better, like, better departure and approach angles. But um, what I think what's funny is like when you look at the very back of it, like that one shot I have where you're like looking right at the back, that box for all your towing equipment mm -hmm. is gigantic. It's like the size of my laptop. And to me, it reminds me of it. It's like a, it's like a reset button. You just like you know <laughs> just, dude it is just, it is a big button like it's a big button yeah and i think that's like the one thing i would change is i would maybe figure out a way to like blend that in or take that off but i mean look at it and the rear glass lifts up which is important to call out too because that's um yeah is that does this count as a button here on the side i think that is a button on how it opens it up um i think that's the that's a gx thing is the button was always on the side because it used to be the swing door yep yep yeah that's now a, good, a lift gate that's a good point yeah that's worth noting too it's now a lift gate that lifts up and um the gx still will offer three rows of seats but in the overtrail trims you can only get two and that's why like you get that gigantic trunk when you have the only the two yeah, so that's that's the overtrail. So that's yeah, with that fold yep, down. That's the second row that's folding there. <laughs> <laughs> three anchor points though. Just yeah. saying. You yeah, three screamers you in the back. There you go. Family, family vehicle. I I really wish that, and maybe it's I don't know. Obviously, like we have to learn pricing. The GX also doesn't come out until like Q1 of next year. So we've got plenty of time. But um I really hope that. I mean, God, Toyota better do it with the next 4Runner, but it'd be cool if the GX had it too. 
One of my favorite features in the industry is that pull-out sliding cargo shelf in the floor yep. runner. I wish every vehicle had that. I mean, so mine didn't slide out. It was a it, tray on my. Was that a fourth gen? Did it have a handle you gen. pulled? No, it would just you could you would actually move it in and it mm -hmm. would create space up and then you could lock it on the sides and it created oh, like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that was more like a, a, that sounds like it was more of like a shelf, like an adjustable shelf, but yeah, yeah it was like a partial tray basically mm -hmm. if you wanted. Mm -hmm. the, the current forerunner has it where it's literally on rails on the side. You can just slide out. Yeah. And you can actually sit on it too, which is neat. So like you can just like pull it out and pop your butt on it and put on some hiking boots or something like that. I love that feature. If I wish, if I could pay extra to have that on my old Subaru, I'd do that. <laughs> it's just genius. Makes life that was fun. that was one of the selling points on the adventure vans. They had this gear slide, and people would be like, "Well, you can you know you can slide it out, and you can you can sit on it or whatever." Yeah. Until until like uh, owners would like back their van up to a quarry and then use that as a diving board. <laughs> they would extend that's that out the hilarious. back. Hilarious. They were like. Yeah, so that's no longer approved. Like oh. you have to sign a liability waiver, like if you're gonna do that. So that's so yeah. funny. I never thought of that. <laughs> adventurous people buying adventurous products are gonna do yeah, silly I was, things. I, I was gonna say though, that makes that makes some sense. <laughs> <laughs> I did find photos of your fifth gen tray though. I don't know if that's factory though, the ones I'm looking at. On the Sale floor? looks like they're yeah, there, there. I know there's a factory version, but like the ones here, it is. This is the one that actually is branded. Um, it is a factory. Because, it is a factory accessory. Yeah, yeah. This I one is that. branded foreigner. The other ones, I think, were like used by somebody else. Yeah, that's factory. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. So oh, that's such a good that is handy. If they that was in the back of the GX, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Again, we haven't seen the accessories yet for the GX, so. You know, let's 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 stay optimistic and hope. Right. Gets I did find somebody, of course, to the side by side. With the, the Defender and the new GX. Oh, no. I don't know. Given given my money, I'd still take the Defender. Oh, hard no. Oh, it's so good. I love the Defender. It's such oh. a good vehicle. All I mean, of the to... good four by four controls are in the electric infotainment system. That's that's true. That's true. I mean, the Meridian infotainment's good, but it's definitely a lot more layered than the Toyota one. As um, much as I love the look of the Defender, and I have enjoyed driving one, mm -hmm. I'm not trusting Land Rover Electrics. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, thankfully, though, a lot of them now have that BMW V8 in them, so they're, they've gone to BMW propulsion, but yeah, they need to not BMW infotainment yet which yeah, you know, I would I would if I so if you had to buy any vehicle for a four by four um or just an SUV uh to get dirty regardless of it is if it's the most unreliable money pit no money limit uh what would you get I think I own it I think a hundred <laughs> series yeah okay okay well I mean because I'm taking into account like if I needed three rows of seats as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I, like I've driven my 80 series. And so like, yeah, there's things that like visually are stunning, like mm -hmm. Defender 90s and Defender 110s. Like mm -hmm. I don't, that's not a enjoyable space. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, like a built 200 series is probably the best one because the 5.7 has 380 horsepower where the four seven and I think is two hundred and seventy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe two eighty something in the Lexus because they they changed premium gas or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, probably a V eight power two hundred series. Just nice. That's a good answer. I'd I'd get a I'd get a Range Rover from like the early two thousands to mid two thousands. Um, yeah. See, I can't. I can't take the reliability part of it out of my brain that's i know and that's that's what that's that's the that's certainly the challenge because um i mean oh man you want to talk unreliable cars like old jags and land rovers <laughs> exactly some, some of them are better than others of course but like when i used to be a valet in in college during the summer i remember we were just getting jaguars or land rovers that people bought for dirt cheap and you know you get in the car and like, 
and then like every check engine light was on and the yeah. sagging because you know you want to you know it's 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 looking flashy on a budget that's why people buy them <laughs> yeah old old mercedes old land rovers old oh, yeah. BMWs, old mm-hmm. audis my my when i was in high school i worked at a used luxury car dealership my senior year for a couple months and that gave me <laughs> full exposure to why you don't buy well no why you, not why you don't buy but why you have to be extra cautious about buying any old luxury car that's made you know outside of japan because right oh man Oof. good god Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well sweet man i think we did a show yeah that was fun thanks for having me it was good to chat thanks for thanks for giving me more time <laughs> you're good you're good i need you give to me go. tons of time lately i need to go do house stuff so it's, it's yeah good, you do good to, good to chat for a while i always enjoy talking cars with you it's always fun is it almost still daylight by you because you're far enough north now uh no sir it is pitch black uh, okay <laughs> that's all right that's I've got, lights in, I've got lights in my lawn and i can do it all therapeutically and... yeah that's just the one thing i noticed when i was up there i was like why is the sun up at five mm-hmm. yeah. well it's once we get into more of like the the middle of summer, I mean, you'll have daylight till eight, nine o'clock at night. But I, I think we're still slowly getting there. Oh, um, you should be getting there quickly. We're only like a week away from the summer solstice. <laughs> I don't know. To me, summer started on June first, but I don't know. The whole solstice calendar is the one to follow. I just need. To exactly. <laughs> well, when I was when I was teaching, and this is a little inside baseball, people, I used to get so depressed once we passed June twenty first. Because yeah. I knew I knew I was losing daylight every day, and I was on the <laughs> downslope of the summer, and I was going to have to be back in school within six weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to hate the month of July. Not teaching makes July more fun. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, now I'm just hoping to get all the kids back into school. So anyway, mm-hmm. 